one of God brings good news to the oppressed and binds up the brokenhearted. We are witnesses to the light of Christ. The promised one of God proclaims liberty to captives and release to prisoners. We are witnesses to the light of Christ. The promised one of God comforts all who mourn and gives a mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. Rejoicing always, praying without ceasing, holding fast to what is good. We are witnesses to the light of Christ. Watch and wait for Christ's coming. Light candles of hope, peace, joy, and love, remembering the promises of God with prayer. We light this candle in hope. We light this candle for peace. We light this candle in joy. Rejoice, for our Lord is coming into the darkness of oppression's exile to lead us home, as we hear in Isaiah 35, 1 through 10. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of the Lebanon shall be given to it. The majesty of Carmel and Sharon, they shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make the firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are fearful heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. And the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For water shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. 
The haunt of Jehovah shall become a swamp. The grass shall become reeds and rushes. A highway shall be there, and it shall be called the holy way. The unclean shall not travel on it, but it shall be for God's people. No traveler, not even fool, shall go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come up on it. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there, and the ransomed of the Lord shall return. And come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Let us pray. O Lord, our Redeemer, you lead us from languishing and sorrow shadows into laughter's joy over your abundant restoration. Thank you that you are coming for us to lead us home along your way. Jesus Christ, amen. and new wrongs wear ruts through our lives and relationships, but God is able to restore us. Like water coursing through a desert, the waters of baptism flow through us, reminding us that we belong to God and are raised to new life. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Merciful God, you love justice. Why, then, do we persist in wrongdoing in every form of evil? You have given us the gift of your spirit. Why then do we quench the spirit among us? You have given us the words of the prophet and the, the, of the word himself. Why then do we despise and ignore what we have heard from you? You have sent the light into the world. Why then have we loved darkness rather than light? Forgive us, restore us. Till and tend us as your garden until righteousness and praise spring up. For the sake of Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray, amen. In Jesus Christ, the Lord has done great things for us. Even if we have gone out in tears, God brings us home shouting for joy. Thanks be to God. We are forgiven. Holy One, giver of life and light, as your word is read and proclaimed, Illumine our hearts and minds that by the power of the Holy Spirit, our lives may reflect God's glory. Amen. Today's first reading will be from Isaiah 61, verses 1 through 4, and then verses 8 through 11. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance for our, of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the planting 
the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations, and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people of who the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my Lord, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as the bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. The second reading is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verses 46 through 55. Listen anew to the word of God. And Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely, from now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. And Mary remained with Elizabeth about three months and then returned to her home. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. 
May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, for you are our Redeemer and Savior. Amen. One of my most favorite pieces of music at this time of year, particularly, is Handel's Messiah. I have sung the songs many times in the choirs I've been a part of, and it's always been very special. When something wonderful has happened to you, um, the birth of your child, the birth of a grandchild, a new job, a new animal, an enjoyable trip, how have you responded? Initially responded. I'll bet it was with a huge smile or, oh my goodness, you've you raised your voice with thanksgiving and you want to tell everyone about your good news. I think that is what happened in many ways to Mary. Mary's song, the Magnificat, is one of great joy and anticipation. Luke beckons us into his gospel with beautiful music that calls us to worship God. He has put together the choir, two women, two men, and all the angels as backup vocals. That is the point of music, to invite us, to call us, to prepare us to meet God. Mary's song is all about magnifying Jesus Christ as Lord. Though he has not yet been born, she wants to sing her praises and magnify his name. In other words, her spirit magnifies God because her spirit has already rejoiced in God. Now, a spirit that rejoices in God leads to a soul that magnifies God. Biblically, the soul is the root and seat of our emotions. It refers to our inner self, our emotional center. It is through our souls that we relate personally and emotionally to other people. But the spirit is altogether different. <clears throat> the spirit is not our emotional side. It is the side of us that relates to God. It is the part of us that knows who God is and what God is like and what God wants from us. It is the part of us that understands what God has done for us and all that God has given to us. When Mary says that her spirit has rejoiced in God, she is saying, that she has understood who God is. She knows what he has said in his word. She believes in the truths that God has reversed. This is the beginning point of all true worship of God, an understanding of the facts about God. Emotions and feelings are not necessarily part of true worship. There are many of us who have gone to worship on Sunday mornings expecting to leave feeling better. There are a lot of people who think that they have not worshiped God unless they get goosebumps and chills or break out in tears or end up shouting with excitement. Mary reveals that true worship of God begins with the spirit. It begins with an understanding of who God is. True worship is not about us, but about what God is doing and will do. That is why Jesus says in the Gospel of John, chapter 4, that true worshipers worship God in spirit and in truth. True worship of God flows through the spirit based upon the foundation of the word of God. 
where the scriptures are not understood, the spirit does not get involved, and there can be no true worship. Sometimes the emotions and feelings of the soul get involved. That is what happens to Mary here. She says that her soul magnifies the praises and delights in the Lord. In other words, she really is emotional and excited about God. But it that only happened because her spirit willfully understood and rejoiced in God, her Savior. In her song, we hear her joy over God's work of restoration. Interesting, her song of joy about the coming birth of her son sings about what God has already done, back from the words that were just read in Isaiah. The proud are humbled, the powerful pulled down from their thrones. Those who are stuffed are sent away empty-handed. And those who are disempowered, lifted up. And those who are hungry, filled with good things. Mary describes the overturning of the current system of consumption and oppression and violence by the norms of God's kingdom, mercy, justice, and love. And she sings for joy as if these things have already happened. One of the reasons why she can sing this way about the future birth of her child is because she repeats, and it repeats, I'm sorry, the song of God's restoration that has been sung throughout the ages. From the song of Hannah in the days before King David, a thousand years before Christ, to the song of the psalmist in Psalm 146, we hear again, and again, that God's work in this world consists of setting things right. And Mary sings her song of joy because she sees the birth of her son as the beginning of the fulfillment of the hope that people like her had been singing for generations. The future that Mary looked forward to is a vision of the restoration of the whole human family. <clears throat> she saw that with the birth of her son, there would be the establishment of justice that makes it possible for all people to thrive, to reach their God-given potential, to experience the joy and vibrancy that God intends for all people. What that means for those of us who are full and rich here and now is that the only way for us to sing Mary's song with the same kind of joy, the joy of the lowly being lifted up, is that if we actually engage with God in God's work of restoration. God invites us to work at lifting up the lowly, filling the hungry, and restoring those who are disenfranchised. That was what Jesus came to do, to begin God's work of making all things new, of setting right the wrongs and lifting the burdens that we all carry. That's why we celebrate Advent and Christmas. It is a time for us to refocus our attention on God's work in this broken world. It is a time of looking for the salvation that God has promised and a time of singing for joy over what God is already doing among us. Mary, knows that God's plan can be trusted. You and I are called into the partnership with God in God's plan for this world. We each are uniquely made in the image of God, meaning that we are to see God 
in one another and are called to say yes to justice for all. The kingdom that has been promised in Israel's past is coming to pass. Advent announces its inauguration. A changed world is coming. And it is time for us to join the work. Thanks be to God. Amen. I would like to, this might be kind of chaotic. I would like though um, for you to share joys and concerns for our prayers this morning. Hannah turns 16 years old today. Erin, is that her name? Hannah. Hannah. Is that a joy or a concern, Rob? <laughs> That's a God save us all. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a joy, um, kind of. Um, last weekend, or late last week, uh, Thea developed a bad fever. And uh, last uh, week ago, Friday, we took her up to Mount Carmel East to be tested for COVID, and she came back uh, negative. So and she's feeling better. So yes. it's all great. Hey. Um, I'm about to finish my Eagle Scout project. Excellent. I, I uh, went out to Kroger's and got the antibody test and uh, discovered that, or was told that I already had the COVID. So I've got the an antibodies. That, that's my joy. And then when I shared that with my daughter, she said, well, there's a 20% uh, false positive rate on that, Dad. So that was the uh, downer to it. <laughs> sure that we uh, family is all safe and doing well and that we have all our needs met. My joy is finding uh, new ways to celebrate the season. I feel that obviously our family had become very ritualistic um, as many families have become. So finding new creative ways um, has been fun as a family, still celebrating the meaning. My joy is that I still get to stay in school and not go online yet. Well, let us join in prayer. <clears throat> God who restores, you have done great things for us and we rejoice. So often you have filled us with laughter, even turning tears of sadness into shouts of joy. You send prophets who point the way to justice and show the way to you. We thank you for sending good news to us and repairing so much that we have devastated. In this season of light, we lift up in prayer so many who wait in darkness, people who are oppressed by poverty and discrimination, by political upheaval or dangerous rulers, people imprisoned wrongly and also those imprisoned justly. Write what is wrong among us and in us and restore us to you, to others, to ourselves. Oh God, we lift up our joys today for Hannah turning 16, for an Eagle Scout um, award that's about to be finished by Isabel, for Theo who had a bad fever and then the test was negative. We pray for families to be safe and needs met. 
And we thank you for helping us to find new creative ways to celebrate Advent, Christmas, and on. And we give you thanks that a young one here in the midst of us can still stay in school and not be online. Oh God, make the brokenhearted whole again. Comfort those who mourn, repair our ruined cities, and in the jostling and jingling of these days, do not let us lose sight of you or those whom you especially came to serve, people who are in need of healing, people who are overlooked or underserved, the ones who are lost and the ones we have made to feel little and least. Light of the world, live among us always, full of grace and truth. And together we pray the prayer that our Lord taught those following him to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <clears throat> So these words from 1 Thessalonians, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, witness to the light of Christ so that all might believe through him. And may the God of peace call forth your complete dedication. May the light of Christ shine upon you and the Holy Spirit fill you completely now and forever. Amen. <laughs>